Okay, so we're going to be making a bathymetric map. So uh, to start off, you're going to want to go to where all the data is saved. And the first thing we're going to do is bring in the two TIFFs, Lake Victoria 1 and Lake Victoria 2. Uh, these maps are scanned in and georeferenced, so they are accurate. So you're going to click up the plus arrow. And we're just going to zoom into an area just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, give it a second while it draws. Okay. So we have a bunch of depth points all around the map. And we're going to bring in the bathymetry points 1 and bathymetry points 2 at some point. Here we go. But yeah, you, as you can see, most of the points are just digitized directly on top of that. So we're going to just. Click on the synergy points and zoom to layers. So, as you can see, just all of them, some of them are collected from a boat, other are just digitizations. So, in the bottom left corner, we're going to zoom in because it seems that some points weren't digitized. So, I'm just going to zoom in one more time on that. Make sure you can actually see the numbers. Okay, so this map is in feet. And one of these is in meters, one of them is in feet. So we're just going to check out which one. So you're going to right click, go up to open attributes table. And so the Z value on this table is the depth. So looking at it, uh, the lowest one is 0.5 and the highest one is 73. So that seems to be in meters. So we're going to exit out of that. Uh, open up the second one, go to attributes table. And this one is in feet. It says it is. Okay. So this is going to be the one that we want to edit because this maps in feet, that table's in feet. So you're going to click on it and then go up to the little pencil that's the editor and then click on add feature and go right over top of the point and digitize it. So you're going to click and then go to feet and then just type in 21. And we're going to do that for the next four points. So this one's going to be 10. Type that in. This one is going to be 17. Whoop, my bad. Exit that out. 17. Okay, click on 8, I did it again. So yeah, so make sure you're putting it in the right column. There we go, feet, it's going to be 8. Okay, we're going to go up, click save our edits. And turn off editor. Okay, we're going to go down. Right click. Open attribute table, and this one is already in meters. So we're going to open up field calculator, click on that button. So we're going to create a new field. We're going to call it depth. We're going to change it from a whole number to decimal. And we're just going to click in the expression box and then go over to fields and values and just click Z. So it should say 13.5 or something like that down there. And what we're doing here is we're creating a new field called depth, and we're just making it equal to the Z, Z field. Because it's already in meters, we don't need to do any conversions. But this allows us to, if we create two depth, a depth field in point file 1 and a depth field in point file 2, then we can combine them under the depth uh, field, and everything will be all in one. So there we go. It ends up we have a depth field now. In meters, so you're going to save your edits and turn off the editor. Exit out, and we're going to do the same thing for the three points one. Right click, go up to open attribute tables, and this one's in feet, so we're going to build calculator. We are going to create another field called depth again. Make sure we change it to decimal number. And this one's just going to be a little different because the last one we weren't actually converting anything, this time we are. So you're going to click fields, you're going to choose feet, then you're going to multiply it by 0 0.3048 and hit OK. So it's going to create a field called depth and give you the depth in meters for all the points in this file. So give it a second while that runs. Oh, 
Okay, and there we go. So we have a new field called depth. So we're going to save your edits and turn off the editor. Exit out of that. Okay. So we have image points one, the image points two. I'm just going to zoom to the layer. So the combination of these two fills up a good amount of the lake. So you're going to go up to Vector, Data Management Tools, and then Merge Shape Files into one. So we're going to put these points into one shape file. So you select by layers in the folder, click Browse, and we want the Thimogy Points one and the Thimogy Points two. I just I'm just going to the proper folder that mine's saved in. So there we go. Here they are. Thimogy Points one, Thimogy Points two. Click Open. And what do we want to save this new shape file as? So we're just going to call it merged points. Okay, and click save, run by clicking OK. So there's the first one, and just let that run for a second. Shouldn't take too long. There we go. Okay, so close it out. And now we have our merge points, so we can just turn off oh, turn off the wrong ones. That's why that doesn't look right. Let me fix that. Okay, there we go. Merge points. There they go. They are all in one shape file now. So we are going to right click on the new shape file, go to properties. Give it a second. Sometimes it takes a little bit, other times it doesn't. Alright, we're gonna go to general. Uh, seems that it's not in the right coordinate reference system. So we're just going to click it, and we're working African Africa Lambert Conformal Conic. Click that, and we're going to create a spatial index. So click that button. And this is going to allow us to run uh, searches on this sh shape file faster than if we didn't create a spatial index. So we're going to click OK. And then I'm just going to get rid of the files that we don't need just because we kind of clutter some stuff up and we're going to get rid of the tiffs also because they draw and it takes it a little longer to do that and we don't really need them anymore that now that we digitized all the points on them so we're going to go up to our files and bring in the shoreline and the fishnet polygon so bring that down and there we go so we have a fishnet agreed behind the shoreline and whatnot so we're going to click on the plus again and we're going to zoom in up top just because I know there are some points that don't lay inside of our polygon and that's kind of a problem. So these points are not inside the shoreline. So we're just going to have to edit them and bring them back in. But there's a way to properly select all of the ones that are not inside of the polygon. So we are going to just zoom back out so you can see everything. Okay. And here's where it gets just a little tricky so if we were to do a select light by location for just by using this uh, shoreline polygon it's way too complex for polygon Q just doesn't really like it so what we're going to do is we're going to clip this polyline or uh, this fishnet with this so then we're going to end up with a bunch of small polygons inside of this so QGIS can then run through it faster and then it's going to look, instead of saying, okay, is the point inside of this big polygon, it's going to look and say, is it inside of this little section right here? Yes, okay, it's in the rest of it. And then it's going to move on if it's not, and it just runs a lot faster by breaking it down into smaller pieces instead of trying to run it all at once. So here we go. So we're going to go up to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, Clip. Bet. So fishnet poly is going to be our input, our Lake Victoria shoreline is going to be our output, and then or is our clip layer, and then what do we want to save this new one as? So we're just going to call it clipped fishnet. And we're going to hit OK. Alrighty. This might take a few minutes, but uh when I was doing it without clipping it and just trying to do it with the big uh, normal shoreline, 
it usually crashed QGIS or it took about an hour to do. So by clipping it, it might take a couple minutes, I think like five or so, but in the long run, it's going to save time. So I'm just going to pause the video and then I'll start it back up.